for the whole of my life, I used to deliver newspapers every morning. Um, up at 3 o'clock every day, into my big smelly van to drive around the city and the county, throwing newspapers off the news agents. Um, what I realised during those mornings was you'd often be driving around at 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. There's four planes flying above you, there's big white sprays out behind them. They're all going different directions, they're crossing over each other. And then you notice in the distance these planes will come back. So what do we do? So the other thing is more. Go across the sky again, do the same thing. Now we've all read and heard about chemtrails and geoengineering. But when you say this to people, they look at you with blank faces as if to say, you're nuts, you know, this fucking exhaust fumes from the planes. So, Kerry here is coming up next, I'm going to tell you that it's not just the exhaust fumes, or contrails as it has to believe. So can you put your hands together please? Thank you. Thank you everyone, my name is Terry Lawton. I am, I am an environmental activist from County Wexford and I bring awareness to climate engineering of chemtrails, just like this gentleman said. Um, now many, mo most of us, well all of us, would, would be very familiar with the term uh, climate change, but not so many people are familiar with the term climate engineering, yet the history goes back absolute decades. So I mean, we're, in the interest of time, we're going to get straight into the presentation. So, what is climate engineering? Okay, Wikipedia um, describes climate engineering. They say, climate engineering, also referred to as geoengineering or climate intervention, is the deliberate and large scale intervention in the Earth's climatic system with the aim of limiting adverse climate change. Now, I, rather than elaborating on Wikipedia's definition, I want uh, one, one of the top scientists from the UK Met Office to elaborate what climate engineering is. Geoengineering is a method to counterbalance um, the effects of global warming owing to the increased uh, concentrations of um, atmospheric greenhouse gases. Geoengineering or climate engineering generally falls into two specific categories. The first of which is called carbon dioxide removal, which um, as the name suggests is basically uh, capturing carbon from the atmosphere and storing it. Um, the second uh, method is um, what's known as solar radiation management. Now, solar radiation management uh, differs from um, carbon dioxide removal in that what you're trying to do is reflect an additional amount of um, sunlight back out to space. So solar radiation management is basically trying to reflect sunlight back out to space, leading to a cooling to counterbalance uh, the increases in greenhouse gases. There's been various different uh, solar radiation management schemes um, that have been mooted as being possible, all of which are basically trying to reflect sunlight back out to space. Um, one of the most popular is to uh, inject some reflected material into the stratosphere. Um, this mimics really the, the impact of uh, volcanic eruptions, um, which have been shown on, on the observational record to cool climate. Can you all hear it okay? Yeah. Video's okay? Okay, um, this is a US military publication called Owning the Weather in 2025 and this is an express goal to do exactly that, Own the Weather in 2025. I'm just going to read the uh, executive summary, just the first paragraph. Uh, in 2025, US Aerospace Forces can own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies and focusing development of those technologies to war fighting applications. Such a capability offers the war fighting tools to shape the battle space in ways never before possible. In, in the Vietnam War, the US military used weather as a weapon um, to swamp out the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They call this Operation Popeye. And all it took was seven aircraft um, to, to uh, extend the monsoon season by up to six weeks. They were able to bring um, five foot of water in one hour by um, sending seven uh, military aircraft up into the highest tower of the, the local cloud systems. They would spray silver iodide from the aircraft into the cloud tower, into the cloud system, and the planes would land half an hour later, the heavens would open. So, very powerful weapon in a war, uh, in a war scenario. Um, RAF and UK Met Office caused a 1952 flood in Devon. Um, UK Met Office and, and, and the RAF were kept conducting rain making experiments. 
um, around this time and um, the, the, vill the village was flooded away as you can see. The village is absolutely devastated, it looks like it was hit by an earthquake or something. Um, there's a BBC Radio 4 documentary on my YouTube channel and I've entitled it uh, UK Met Office Kills 35 People in Rainmaking Experiment in Lynmouth. And this is a, um, it's a, it's a 40, 40 minute radio uh, interview with um, eyewitnesses, you've got um, accounts from pilots, log books, the guys that were doing the sorties, the missions to spray stuff into the atmosphere. And it's just an amazing, verifiable, uh, fact-packed um, um, documentary. JFK talked about controlling the weather in September 25th, 1961, and here is the video. This is at the United Nations General Assembly. Mr. President, honored delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. So, um, I break uh, climate engineering into two um, categories, it's co commercial climate intervention and clandestine climate intervention. So, co commercial climate intervention is where you can, you can go online and you can um, find companies like Weather Modification Incorporated and you can literally buy weather. You can get sunshine, you can get rain, you can get hail, whatever you want, you name it, you got the money, you got it. Um, this is the Beijing Weather Modification Company. and. They employ 37,000 um, people. Absolutely huge weather modification company. Um, most people have no idea that these companies even exist. I didn't up to seven years ago when my head blew off and I started finding out about this subject and so many other things. Um, fluoride, vaccines, the whole, the whole nine yards. Um, this is a company called um, Oliver's Travels. And you can, um, they, they guarantee a perfect day, a perfect um, weather for your wedding day. Guaranteed sunshine. Um, prices start at 100,000 sterling. Yeah. Oh yeah, Oliver's Travels. Go online right now, check it out. Um, there's a Daily Mail uh, article about Oliver's Travels. And they, they ask, would you pay 100,000 to guarantee a sunny wedding day? Travel company offers cloud bursting service to banish rain for couples big day. Oliver's Travels service say, Sir, say, Sir, Oliver's Travel say the service will guarantee blue skies on that special day. The technique is also known as cloud seeding and is widely used in China. Methods involve firing rockets filled with silver iodide crystals into clouds. Particles freeze water droplets causing the clouds to burst and then vanish. The technique was used ahead of the 2008 Beijing Olymp Olympic uh, Open Ceremonies and it was also reportedly used by the Duke and, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge before their wedding day. So, uh, silver iodide is used here um, to banish clouds as opposed to um, the, the, the military um, a, 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 um, a efforts in, in, in Vietnam. They, they use silver iodide to make it rain. So, silver iodide, different types of silver iodide used uh, you, uh, by using different techniques can bring um, desired weather effects. Um, here are the rockets that are mounted onto Ray, uh, Oliver's Travels um, spray planes. And again, spray them into the well, clouds and they get rid of the clouds. Um, this is a company called Rain on Request. And uh, it's, it's a more advanced um, weather modification technology, uh, Rain on Request. They use, they use electromagnetics. And rather than explaining myself how to do this, I'm going to show you a promo video for Rain on Request. Take a look at this. It looks like a bunch of radio towers. It's actually billed as a solution to one of our worst droughts ever. New at 6 o'clock, 10 News reporter Joe Little takes a look at this new system that promises to make it rain whenever we want. Water isn't free unless we get it from the sky. But no one can force Mother Nature to open up and share. Or can we? It all centers around ionization. A new Miami-based company called Rain on Request says it could install a bunch of electrical towers and create an ion field. Which uh, literally makes it rain. I spoke with manager Larry Gitman via Skype. What is Rain on Request? He says one of their systems could make it rain within a 15-mile radius. Each system consists of a primary 100-foot tower and 10 40-foot towers. The low watt electrical towers create an ion field, which would create rain clouds. We have tested and proven the system on a fairly large scale in the Middle East. Gitman says they're using an Indiegogo online campaign to raise $1 million to build 
one system in California. For all of California, uh, we need about 200 stations, and it would cost less than $100 million. With that, Gibbon says the state would be drought-free forever and at a fraction of the cost of the $7.5 billion water bond voters approved on election day. And we would be able to restore rainfall levels throughout the entire state of California. So we'd have a bunch of towers as big as this one all over the state making it rain. So aesthetics aside, there's also an ethical question. Experts say we'd be stealing rainwater from somebody else. Several water districts declined to comment, saying they didn't have enough information. However, two experts said the system could work but it would basically be preventing rain from falling somewhere else, making rain on request a little more controversial. Covering California's drought, Joe Little, 10 News. Well, this wouldn't be San Diego's first <laughs> taste of rainmaking. The city hired Charles Hatfield in 1915 to, quote, seed clouds near Lake Morena. He was allegedly successful making it rain for 17 straight days, and the 28 inches of rain caused $3.5 million in flood damage. Yeah, um, uh, this is CBS News. Uh, scientists think they can control the weather using lasers. Uh, Dublin City University have actually uh, par partaked um, in developing these lasers. The, la the lasers already exist. I'm just going to cover that in a couple of minutes in another article. Uh, but they, it's, they, um, they, the technology is very much uh, in place. Uh, so there are different types of ways, there are different ways to control the weather. Uh, lots, lots of different ways to control the weather. Hundreds of companies conducting thousands of programs around the world every day. This is um, a report from the World Meteorological Organization from 2012 and it lists 42 countries engaged in full-time weather modification activities. And these uh, programs range from rainfall enhancement to hail suppression, and just fog disbursement, um, you name it, just uh, all, different, all different types of methods being used. Um, this is a NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, this is a list of NOAA's uh, reported, some of NOAA's reported projects in the United States for 2010. And there's one program, just to highlight the enormity of the programs that are going on here, there's one program, and um, it's by the, the, can you read that? Okay, it's a bit blurry. Over here, when it says the project, and the project name, um, is Division V cloud seeding. The operator is Franklin Soil and Water, and the purpose was precipitation augmentation, so rain enhancement. Um, and the, the, the square mileage that that program covered for the year 2010 was 184,000 square miles. And climate change is all your fault. Uh, weather. Weather is also tr tr uh, traded as a commodity on the stock exchange. This is known as uh, weather derivatives, uh, weather derivatives market, and it's a multi-trillion dollar, dollar industry. In a nutshell, with a weather, with weather derivatives, you can insure a crop of corn for 10 times the amount it's worth, and thus profit tenfold if that crop fails. So, if you uh, hired a weather modification company uh, into swamp by your crops, bingo. Big money. Uh, important to know that 80% of the world's economy is weather sensitive. So controlling the weather is a very, very powerful um, capability, not only in a war fighting situation scenario, but for economic purposes. <coughs> so there's clandestine, this, that was commercial climate engineering, now there's the clandestine side of climate engineering. This jet plane spraying trails into the sky. Um, what part of the cloud it used to look like? What part of cloudy looks like now? This photo I took myself a few years back from my front uh, door <coughs> in Wexford. Uh, all the photos I'll be showing you here are um, I took myself. Um, this is over Kilmore Key, just not too far away from here. Um, about four years ago, absolutely just devastated. Absolute horror scene. You know that feeling you had when you saw the Twin Towers falling down? You know that feeling? That's, that's the feeling I have every time I wake up to this every morning, I tell you. Unbelievable, trying to trying to convey this message to people and they just, you know, so frustrating. People laugh at you, they ridicule you. I don't mind people laughing at me, don't give me a shit, but you know, it's just so frustrating, you know, they're just going along with their own extermination so willfully. It's just unbelievable. And all it takes for is for people to really just look up and understand what the hell is going on. It's not too much to, it doesn't take too much to figure it out. Um, here we go, just more horror scenes. 2014. So you look at old photos and you, you don't see clouds created by air traffic. This is Paris in the 1960s, this is Paris in the modern day. 
Um, governments around the world are now proposing blocking out the sun and taking control of the Earth's climate. Hands up, anybody here who already knew about this? Does anybody already know this? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're talking about probably half the audience here. So these are all obviously um, very, very awakened to what's going on, like the fact that these are here. Um, so, um, okay, here's a. Irish Examiner headline, global sunblock could slow down climate change. Pumping a sun reflective um, into the atmosphere could help slow global warming, says David Keith. I will get on to David Keith in a minute. Um, what David Keith and the climate engineers are proposing is mimicking uh, a volcano, uh, volcanic eruption. They say that uh, when volcanoes erupted throughout history, it's created a fallout that's um, um, created sulfuric, uh, sulfuric uh, acid cloud around the planet, and it's cool the planet, basically. And the, the example they use is Mount Pinatubo, the Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991. And this is what they were proposed doing, like Jim Hayward from Medoff's talked about spraying sulfates into the atmosphere to reflect sunlight into space. And uh, many other schemes, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, there's another one called marine cloud brightening, where they will send ships out into the ocean and spray salt water particles up into the clouds. This is basically just mimicking natural processes. Clouds form through many different processes naturally, and this is one of them, salt water particles. So they're basically, they propose accelerating this natural process. Also mirrors in space, all sorts of different stuff. They're, they're talking about um, taking the, uh, not knocking the planet off um, its orbital alignment and all sorts of stuff to shorten the day and everything. Talking really just crazy science fiction stuff here. National Geographic, cover of National Geographic last year, uh, it was actually 2015, cool it. Uh, here's the article here, they talk about str um, stratospheric aerosols here, basically chemtrailing is what they're talking about here. Uh, just gonna, and over here as well, carbon dioxide removal. They want to move, remove carbon from the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as well. Just gonna zoom in closer on this here. There we go, stratospheric aerosols. And again, they use, when they use the eruption, when Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines, it spewed sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, and they're talking about how they could mimic that. So, um, I've been to three climate engineering conferences. The first one I attended with a few other uh, activists, Harry Rose and Max Bliss, um, and a couple of others in 2014 in Berlin. And these are not just uh, guys in the street or anything. These are top brass from military, uh, NASA, just top government departments from around the world, um, Royal Society, and um, all that. <coughs> all congregated for five days to, to uh, propose taking control of the Earth's climate. Exactly what I'm talking about. Stratospheric aerosol injection, which is spraying stuff into the atmosphere from airplanes, or solar radiation management, they call it. Uh, loads of different terms just to confuse the public. Um, and in, in, in this, um, in this, present, in this uh, conference, they, they, they proposed all of those different schemes that I was talking about there. And uh, this is the uh, next conference I was at a year later in 2015 in, in Cambridge University. SRM Science, uh, Solar Radiation Management Science, 2015. And again, top guys from top universities and all that there, all talking about this great idea to block out the sun. Brilliant, you know, to spray hundreds of millions of tons of sulfuric acid on us all to save us from climate change. And absolutely uh, insane. This is uh, the next conference I went to in the Royal Society headquarters in London in 2016, just last year, and it's called Geoengineering the Climate. So you would imagine that this would be breaking news, government plans to block out the sun, spray sulfuric acid into the atmosphere and never let us see the sun again. But government wants us distracted by other things. It's not important to, uh, to, to inform the public that we're going to block out the sun or we're already doing it. No, they just give us the bread and surface, keep us dumbed down and, and docile just like that last gentleman I was talking about. So what they're proposing we are seeing every day all around the world. This is what they're proposing. But we see it every day, so if you see it going on and you talk about this, you dare to speak out about it, you're a conspiracy theorist. You see, that's how it works. They have to label us something or other, you know? <coughs> so, here we go. Emirates Airlines, spraying, 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 another photo I took over Wexford atmosphere obliterated. Uh, uh, Ireland and UK, absolutely obliterated. Not very clear there, but it's just jet trails and we are not one natural cloud formation there. This is over Mediterranean. Taylor made right, um, finishes all the trails, just finish exactly where the uh, Mediterranean ends all around the rim of it there. Um, you know, it just seems like this huge big trail, and then one little tiny trail, and then you might see other planes not spraying at all. <laughs> so, um, but they're just condensation trails, right? This is what everyone would say. No, they're not, and we'll get into that in a minute, but, uh, but even if they were, the fact is, 
that airplanes are creating clouds and are blocking out the sun and changing the climate, which is exactly what the climate engineers are proposing. So how do we know they are not condensation trails? Well, go on to Wikipedia and look at the definition of contrail. And actually, this is just later on, uh, this is a screenshot, I'm going further down the page here now. Um, but uh, here we go, just down to here. Contrails usually form at very high altitudes, usually above 8,000 meters, where the air temperature is uh, below minus 36.5 Celsius, and the relative humidity is above 60%. Remember that, relative humidity, very important. Now, when I took this screenshot uh, uh, from, from the internet about four years ago, since then, it's been taken away, the relative humidity aspect has been taken away, so they're destroying information, basically burning pages and trying to destroy information. So how do, how do we find out the relative humidity on any given day? Uh, we go on to the University of Wyoming Atmospheric Soundings website and check, uh, you go to your local area, with, I click on the air, if you're in the North or wherever you are, and you just click on your own local observatory, and this is Valencia in Kerry, and you click on there and it'll give you uh, the atmospheric soundings for that day, the different uh, temperatures, relative humidity, so on and so forth. Um, so, this is the uh, 15th of March, 2016. Okay, atmosphere obliterated, jet trails, not one natural cloud cover, uh, cloud formation. And uh, this is from that day, 15th of March, um, from the uh, Valencia Observatory uh, Atmospheric Soundings. And you go down here to 10,000 meters, which would be uh, average uh, cruising altitude, and you go across to the relative humidity, and the relative humidity there is only 15% on that day. So it was impossible that what? I, I was, what I photographed there that day is a, a scientific impossibility for those people. Yeah, I'm going to get into that as well. And by the way, we'll take questions later, okay? Yeah, no, I, no, I did not here asking questions, but just you know, yeah, uh, talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, so this is Germany, 2016, uh, January 20, 2016, Germany and Holland absolutely obliterated. Can you see that? Yeah, um, Harry Rowe's joked uh, a couple of days ago, I said, I, I, I've seen uh, less stitching in some of my jumpers, like, look at the state of it, right? Uh, and again, so that was the 6th of January 2015. Okay, so 6th of January 2015 in England, uh, Germany, um, the um, relative humidity, uh, we've got, first of all, we go to the high 10,000 meters, go across the relative humidity is only 31%, so again, the physical possibility. So the delivery systems, uh, this is the Ryanair Boeing 737, and just, um, I took this video myself, look at how, when I zoom in here, you can see above the exhaust you got a little spray nozzle. Hidden in plain view, all of the commercial airliners have these nozzles. And um, the cover story for these nozzles is that this is from the Boeing Cemetery, the Boeing Schematics website. And they, they say that this, this pipe, this is the aft fairing drain tube for any hydraulic fluid, oil, or fuel that may collect in, the, collect in there. So they're telling us that these aircraft are leaking oil. <laughs> leaking oil and fuel, $200 million aircrafts. Any kind of, in all reality, like, you know, Noddy would understand this, a, t a child of tree would understand it. If, 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 if there was any kind of a leak in, 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 in a plane like this, major safety concern. But they're telling us that this is just an, an everyday thing. They're constantly leaking, and we're supposed to just believe that this Nozzle here is to drain off uh, hydraulic fuels and oils. Even if it was to drain off hydraulic fuels and oils, they're still spraying us with oils and fuels. And here is a patent, the US patent, and it's entitled Powder Contrail Generation. And this is the description. The present invention relates to the method and apparatus uh, for contrail generation and the like. An earlier known method in use for contrail generation involves oil smoke trails produced by injecting liquid oil directly into the hot jet exhaust of an aircraft target vehicle. The oil vaporizes and recondenses, being the aircraft producing a brilliant white trail. So that's a patent. What year was that? Uh, 1975. Ryan, uh, Ryanair Boeing 737 turning on the trail over Wexford. Okay, so as you can see, a uh, plane flying along, it's kind of a bit blurry there, but it's, it's, it, homes, it's, it focuses in on it now. No trail behind the plane, and all of a sudden, straight away. <coughs> so you see lots of this, especially when they're coming into Irish airspace. I was born in the perfect location, actually, to start raising awareness, uh, bringing awareness to the chemtrails, because 
Uh, I'm under the busy, one of the busiest air corridors in the world, and also right at the east corner of Ireland. So I have the opportunity of a bird's eye view to see exactly when they turn on and off the trails. And there's a plane that actually done that was spraying that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, at the Berlin conference, one of the presentations, um, they spoke about, uh, the, the, it was entitled Design of Practical Hardware for Climate Engineering. And in that presentation, they talked about retrofitting aircraft with exactly that kind of equipment. There we go, that's just a photo of it. My you. But commercial airliners, uh, commercial airline companies surely wouldn't have an interest in engineering the climate, would they? Well, it so happens that Richard Branson offered a $25 million prize to solve global warming by geoengineering. Richard Branson would obviously have a very keen interest in geoengineering the planet. Uh, these company, these airline companies are making a fortune out of it. Have you ever wondered why Ryanair flights are so cheap? You know, 20 quid for a bloody flight to the other half, halfway around, you know, not the world, but the other side of Europe. Or far, you know, that doesn't even pay the bloody the, the landing charges. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, being subsidized or making billions out of this, making billions out of killing you and your family, basically. Um, this is a Virgin Airlines plane. Uh, but why would the pilots spray their own children? People ask this. And I, I don't believe the pilots are any way involved in this. They're just flying the plane. I spoke to a pilot uh, on an information day in Cairo last year, and uh, this guy was genuine from the heart. He heard the country as before, but he said he has no involvement in it whatsoever. He said he's just a glorified bus driver is all he does. He gets on the plane, just like a passenger gets on it. He, but he, except he just drives the bloody thing or flies it, gets off, and that's it. He's done his job. He knows nothing about what's going on. He knows what's going on. He knows it's going on, but he doesn't have any involvement, as he was telling me. So, but it just left it, here we go. So this this was um, this was um, circulating the internet. You know, a lot of people think that the switch in the cockpit. You know, that was just a hoax uh, photo. So these pilots are busy flying the plane. So why would they even need to be involved when it could all be done remotely? So how could this be done? Just like that lady asked, how could this, this be coordinated? Right. So this is the uh, Met Office headquarters in Exeter. And in 2015, myself, Harry Rhodes, and Martin Beard. Uh, and Harry's son, Lexon, went down to the Met Office for an open day. They, they do two, uh, two open days every year. And when we were um, making our way onto the grounds, we saw this sign, and this sign reads, this is a prohibited place within the, the meaning of the Official Secrets Act. Official Secrets Act. Why would the Met Office be subject to the Official Secrets Act? <coughs> well, because in the Met Office is this computer. This is one of the, lar well, it's the world's most powerful atmospheric supercomputer, but well, it's one of the most powerful supercomputers super in the world. This computer knows exactly what's going on in every square inch of the world's atmosphere. So if you want a computer to coordinate a global weather modification or climate engineering program, that is the computer for the job. So how would this be done? Right, this is the Met Office headquarters, the data center. Okay, uh, data center picks up and sees over Ireland, let's say over Wexford or Waterford, let's say, there's a blue hole, oh we don't want the blue hole, we got cloud everywhere else, but we don't want that blue hole, they're getting sunshine, they're getting sunshine, quick, cover them over, okay, so, computer sends a signal, transmits it up to a satellite, satellite pings that signal, and triggers the remote control on the spray jet, very simple thing, we're in, you know, we're living in the 21st century, could do this stuff decades ago, very, very easy, pilots would not need to be involved. <laughs> but this would require the involvement of a lot of people. Surely it would not be possible for so many people to be involved in something so sinister. Well, I always refer to the Manhattan Project, the, the, uh, the, the construction of the, 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 the manufacture of the atomic bomb. 130,000 people worked on that project. Compartmentalization is what the process, as Mick said, is, and this is what they do in every with, with everything, with, with the fluoride in the water, you know, the guy putting the fluoride into the water doesn't necessarily, he's not necessarily evil, he's probably a good guy, chances are he is. I spoke to one in, 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 um, in, Europe, in uh, Gory actually a few years ago, a uh, guy that puts the, water, the fluoride into the water, and he said that he's actually been putting less in lately because he's, he's starting to wake up to it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I interviewed that guy. That's, that's on YouTube, that's on YouTube, and uh, it's, it's an information day in Gordy, Fluoride Awareness Day 2012, you, see, you can see it for yourself. So compartmentalization, how does it work? So everybody, all the uh, operatives, all the different uh, operatives involved in the, the program um, are compartmentalized, they're only working, all working on just a need-to-know basis, so it's like 
Um, you know, like in a, just like a building, a bank. Let's say the lower level employees work on literally the first floor, then the guys, the higher they will go up in the, in, in, in the rankings, the, the more they know and all that. So uh, the, the guys on the bottom floor would be less knowledgeable and the chances are they're probably more well-meaning. And then the higher they go up, the more psychopathic they tend to get. Like, you know, they would start to sell their mother maybe by the time they get to the third floor or something like that. So, um, so but government wouldn't spray us, would they? Well, this is uh, Wikipedia, Operation Large Area Coverage. Operation Large Area Coverage was a US, chem a US Army chemical corps operation which dispersed microscopic zinc cadmium sulfide particles over much of the United States. The purpose was to determine the dispersion and geographic range of biological or chemical agents. In September 1950, six simulated attacks were conducted upon the San Francisco Bay Area. It was conducted that it was, a, it was feasible to attack a seaport city with biological aerosol agents from a ship offshore. Going down to the last one here, 1957, North Sea, east coast of Britain. Um, it was shown that large area coverage with particles was feasible under the most meteorological conditions. In addition, the Army admitted to spraying in Minnesota locations from 1953 to the 1960s. And uh, this is uh, independent, uh, how the British government subjected thousands of people to chemical and biological warfare trials in the 1950s. Again, all biological warfare trials to see um, how, how, the, how the chemical agents would spread and Basically, the cover story uh, that the, the U.S. that the British military uh, used is that they were they were trying to see how the public would react in the event of an attack by the Russians. So they were doing it for our safety, even though kill loads of people, still for your safety. So what are they spraying? Well, this is from the uh, Royal Society um, Geoengineering and Climate um, um, Conference I attended last year. They, this is a slide, sh a, snap, a snap from a slideshow. And here's the candidates for uh, solar radiation management. Sulfate, sulfuric acid, sulfuric oxide, titania, silicon carbide, diamond, dust, calcium carbonate, alumina, silica and zinc oxide. Alumina is important to know is aluminum oxide, aluminium. Now we'll get to that in a minute. So, um, how many of these proposed substances are they spraying? We know that they are spraying different substances because there are different types of trails. You've got little short ones, short narrow ones, you've got long narrow ones, you've got long wide ones, and so on and so forth. Just a whole different plethora of different types of trails. You've got big, look at the big wide fat one there, long one, and it's the side of the time, the short one dwarfing it. Multicolored ones here, uh, you've got other ones that, uh, there's a plane there by the way, and it's just coning out, coning out there, and you can see there's like little uh, bubbles flying down off that, so there's obviously weight in that there. It's something is heavier than the top, and um, it's just falling down into little bubbles. Uh, this is a photo again I took, and I'm going to zoom in closer. Just see, I'm going to zoom in closer, and you'll see the two trails in the plane are there from the engine, but also you have a, a, a separation. You see there's a chemical separation. There's a different substance clearly separated from that there. So this is the air link, it's um, Airbus A319, and uh, see the green there, it's the air links. And uh, um, above the exhaust on the air link, um, plane, you got three pipes. So the potential to spray whatever there uh, would be absolutely limitless. That's a close up of that. <coughs> on a very rare occasion when we do see blue sky and there are no lingering trails, uh, the sky is still not uh, blue, natural blue, with all the particles floating around up there. You see all this, you know, you wake up some days and you go, oh God, maybe they've stopped, but you know, it never, it never stops, you know, evil never sleeps, they're always spraying. Even when you don't see uh, trails coming from, they're constantly spraying. There's actually a patent that I haven't included on it called, um, um, a patent, it's a patent for invisible chemtrails, basically, a US patent. Uh, so, the climate engineering salesman. This is David Keith, guy I spoke about earlier on. David Keith is one of the most prominent, he's like the poster child of the climate engineering proponents. And this guy goes around the world, he's been at all of these conferences that I've been at, well, uh, uh, two of them. And he wants to spray um, sulfuric acid and uh, aluminium oxide on you and your family. Here he is on the Colbert, uh, hang on, sorry. Aluminium oxide and sulfuric acid are the materials of choice that he wants to spray. So here he is on the Colbert, Colbert show in America a couple of years ago. Um, talking about spraying sulfuric acid on your inner children.
Exactly. Okay, so what do we do? So the other thing is horrifying, is that you could actually spray sulfuric acid in the stratosphere, 20 kilometers over our head, and use that to stop the planet warming up. And it's okay, an you, ugly you, tech fix. You could, you could spray something into the atmosphere to yeah. change... Okay, spray okay. pollution into the atmosphere to stop it warming. Okay, nice guy. So aluminium floating around at uh, a cruising altitude. We know that there's aluminium floating around at a cruising altitude, not only from our own, but we've been able to see with our own eyes, just like the photo I showed you, <laughs> but from, t uh, 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 this is a, from the UK Civil Aviation Authority, a, a 2004 paper uh, into cabin air quality. It was a test they conducted. And it concluded um, the materials that were found in the cabin, and one of the peak materials was aluminium. Aerotoxic syndrome, aviation's darkest secret. BA flight are killed by toxic fumes on flight deck after being constantly exposed to fuel, fuel leaks on board passenger jet. Two BA pilots killed by toxic fumes. Ill pair both complain of exposure to contaminated cockpit air. Passengers' lives are at risk. Daily Mail. Passenger lives are at risk from toxic toxic fumes in cabin. A <laughs> coroner investigating death of BA pilot tells airline chiefs. And the World Health Organization announced uh, that two years ago that air pollution now is, is, is the single greatest environmental health risk. <coughs> and the media are now normalizing weaponized air as a reality we must get used to. Um, uh, pro if, you, if you just notice the, the programs that RT and BBC and all are all running, they're normalizing all of this bad air, this bad air, but it's all their fault, they're telling us it's their fault. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, what, what, what they're saying is causing it. Um, 200,000 people in Ireland uh, suffer with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease with an estimated 150,000 undiagnosed. 470,000 with asthma, that's a tenth of the population. And dementia and Alzheimer's are now the leading cause of death in England and Wales. Imagine that. All of us know somebody with dementia and Alzheimer's just off the charts and it was that last gentleman was saying it, wasn't, it was unheard of before vaccines came out. I'm not saying that all to do with geoengineering. It's so hard to know where all of this stuff is coming from, but it's, it's the combination, it's, it's a binary attack, it's trinary, it's, it's so many different attacks from so many different angles. Nano-sized aluminium being sprayed into the atmosphere causing degenerative disease, says neurosurgeon. Refer to the work of Dr. Russell Blaylock. This guy has done his research, he knows his shit, 25, 30, 30 years experience. This guy has uh, made a connection, conclusive evidence, uh, connection between chemtrailing and uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, this is a water test that I took from my back garden, a uh, water sample, and the test results that came back, and aluminium came back at 37.5 parts uh, per million. And aluminium basically shouldn't be in rainwater. Um, aluminium, yes, is the most abundant metal, but it should only be in unbonded form um, no, in bonded form in the soil, not unbonded form like it's been found now in rainwater and in the UK Civil Aviation Authority's cabin air test and all that. Alzheimer's again linked to the aluminium. Lancaster University last year, just late last year, came out with a press release again to normalise this bad air that we all are breathing. And but we have to, we have to live with this. This is nothing we can do about it. It's all our fault. Uh, just stop driving cars and all that basically is what they're saying. So, so she, she's not saying that, but uh, this is basically what's saying. So here at Lancaster University, we've made a recent discovery. We've found for the first time that there are literally millions of tiny magnetic crystals inside human brains. And those crystals shouldn't be there. They consist of magnetite, a strongly magnetic material that is damaging to our brains. It, it causes the formation of very reactive oxygen species, such as free radicals, that cause cell damage and eventually cell death, the hallmarks of diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Where did these particles come from? They look strikingly similar to magnetic particles that occur in the airborne pollution mix. And where do those particles arise from? They come from vehicles, particularly uh, through combustion of fuel, through the frictional heating of brake pads. And we can actually walk down the street and be breathing those particles up through our noses and directly inside our brains. Our work doesn't yet prove a causal link between these particles in the atmosphere and Alzheimer's disease, but it's a potential environmental risk factor that we can't afford to ignore. So, particles in the atmosphere, she's saying, are coming from car emissions and brake pads. <laughs> Imagine that. Car emissions and brake pads, way up in the atmosphere, not a mention of air traffic. <laughs> um, 
Flight Radar 24, this is, on any given day, you can just see uh, the amount of air traffic around the world, there's like thousands of flights up there at any given minute. And uh, just like bees on a hive, you know, if you zoom in into Europe now, it just even seems like there's more than you can see there, it's just like thousands over Europe alone. But, uh, but you know, it's, not, it's nothing to do with the airplanes, nothing to do with it. it's you driving your car, and those brake pads, every time you slam on those brakes, you should feel really guilty, because you're causing Alzheimer's. How dare you? Nanoparticles. She's talking about that lady at Lancaster University. Magnetic <coughs> nanoparticles she talks about there, okay? Now, this is a paper from David Keith, that psychopath you just saw on the Colbert show, wanting to spray sulfuric acid on you and your children. This is one of his papers, Photophoretic Levitation of Engineered Aerosols for Geoengineering. Now, in this paper, he talks about spraying the atmosphere. I'm not going to read all that there, but he talks about, again, spraying the atmosphere with, look, engineered nanoparticles and magnetic materials. That's exactly what that lady was talking about, or now we've found the human brains, which is causing Alzheimer's disease. The bees now have dementia. Our poor, busy, little, beautiful friends have dementia. Their poor little brains are just loaded with aluminium. They can't do one thing about it. God love them. Einstein said, if the bees go, we've only, we've only got four years left. Uh, um, a study into a thousand whales in 10 to 10, 2010, um, a team of scientists um, um, done a study and they found um, jaw dropping levels of heavy metals in the whales uh, bodies and these tests were done in the most remote parts of the planet like North Pole and just like all around the place, Galapagos Islands and all that so like places that should be pristine you know but you know so where's all this bloody aluminium coming from? By the way, look at you in your car, have anybody got a submarine here by the way? Yeah. If you got a submarine, they're going to blame you next. That's I tell you, that's what they're going to come out with next. So Monsanto, Monsanto, Monsanto are heavily involved in this uh, um, deleterious program. Um, Monsanto have uh, come out with a, an aluminium resistant seed line to cope with this aluminium contaminated soil as a result of all these programs. And Monsanto have also bought uh, a bee research company called Biologics. Uh, that was back in 2011, and they have patented a super bee, and now this bee can only pollinate Monsanto crops. Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, pure evil. Monsanto have bought up all the heirloom seed suppliers. Here is a list of all the heirloom seed companies they've got. So, you know, just when you're thinking, you go shopping and you think you're all clever and you go, oh, I just buy from, you know, something that sounds nice and organic and healthy and all. Mountain Valley Seed sounds great, doesn't it? Monsanto, they own it, pure evil, pure evil, all pure evil, pure evil, just different masks and the same evil face. Media normalizing the lack of sunlight and vitamin D. Uh, over, 60, over 60 should have vitamin D to ward off dementia. Says, says scientist, here's an RTE uh, ad normalizing vit lack of vitamin D, telling us basically we can get our vitamin D for our children from a pot and a and supermarket shelf. You give your kids milk for healthy growth with calcium for strong bone. Sorry. They give your kids milk for healthy growth with calcium for strong bones and feet. But they also need vitamin D to absorb calcium. Just one glass of Avamore Super Milk a day gives them all the vitamin D they need. Calcium. Just one glass of Avamore Super Milk a day gives them all the vitamin D they need. All the vitamin D they need. They don't, your children no longer need the vitamin D from the sun, which is crucial for, for life to, to exist. Vitamin D, sunshine. Your children don't need that anymore. They're going to be clouded over. Their futures are going to be dark clouds and chemtrails and vitamin D from the supermarket. So when the sun does shine, they're telling us to put on sunscreen, more aluminium, full of aluminium. Devastating. Uh, here's a list of uh, vitamin D um, deficiency related diseases. And you've got prostate cancer, breast cancer, bladder cancer. The list goes on. Basically, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. You can find it yourself online. And uh, basically, if you find uh, a disease that's not vitamin D deficiency related, please let me know. In uh, 2015, NASA announced that there is an average of 90% cloud cover over oceans and 70% cloud cover over land. That's just an image from that uh, report. Blocking the sun is no plan. Sorry, to go back to that. So basically, what I'm saying there is very little sun to block out. Very, just 90% cloud over oceans and 70 over land. Very little sun to block out. 
So blocking the sun is plan B for global warming. That was a uh, Scientific American magazine. Not much sun to left to block out, as I said. Here's a video, just a snapshot, uh, uh, snapshots of um, March. For the month of March in 2016, see the date going up here? March 5th, 6th, and it goes on, so on and so forth. Just uh, satellite image, images. And as you can see, there's just very, very little uh, cloud to block out. A very little blue sky left to block out, just cloud everywhere. I'm not going to keep going on with that. That goes all the way to the end of March. It's just the same cloud, cloud, cloud. We know ourselves we're ready to see the sun anyway. Don't need me to tell you. Uh, what about the Environmental Protection Agency? Surely they'd be there to stop it, wouldn't they? EPA to the rescue. Well, EPA stopped checking for aluminium in the environment in 2006. I phoned all these organizations, EPA, DOE, Department of Defense, the, the, all the major agencies. They're all, all calls are up online. Um, and, uh, um, the, the EPA operatives, all these operatives, it's very clear that they're all working from the same script. It's only water vapor, it's only water vapor, they're very calm, they keep calm. Just be calm, walk to your extermination, just really, just be cool. Um, <laughs> and it's very clear that they're all uh, complicit, they're all lying. And uh, it's a travesty, we need to reach out to these people, you know. Um, this is the whole thing about raising awareness. You see, all of us know somebody that is possibly involved in, in, in helping these programs to be conducted. You know, the devil's chariot is always pulled by angels, as the saying goes. So we need to reach out to people. This is the elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. So you phone these agencies and they tell you it's only water vapor, as I said, water vapor. So all sources for life needed to exist are under attack by these programs. Sunlight, water and CO2. Everything needed for life to exist all under attack. Who's funding this? Bill Gates. He's got the Pfizer uh, project, uh, Fund for Innovative Climate Energy Research. He funds uh, geoengineering research, they call it research, it's yeah. all under guys research, up to the tune of uh, 10 million a year. Richard Branson, as I said, uh, $25 million prize to solve global warming by geoengineering. This is a chart that uh, Al Garafa and Pippa King made from Chemtrails Project UK and uh, of the funding tree. And they have here the different departments that are funding geoengineering, <laughs> Department of Business, Innovation and Skills. Um, National Centre for Atmospheric Science, uh, the list goes on, Plymouth Research Laboratory, but basically um, it's, it's the taxpayer, who, who, who funds the government, who funds all these departments, it's the taxpayer, you pay for this. Uh, this is England, but obviously we are part of the British government as well, we're under rule of the monarchy and the bar and all that little ask I talk about, so we pay for it, you, so you're paying to be exterminated, and if you don't pay them taxes you're going to jail, right? So. Um, this is a paper from the Solar Radiation Management Geoengineering uh, Governance Initiative. Okay, now these guys are a think tank organisation to go around the world setting up um, presentations, and they invite delegates of different nations along, and they basically try to sell these delegates the idea of solar radiation management. That set the blocking of the sun is good. And in this paper, this is a paper they wrote uh, to advancing the international governance of geoengineering. Is the name of the paper, and it was written in 2010. Now. Um, this, this has recently been taken from it, but at the end of that paper, here is what it said. Involve the general public because A, they pay for it, and B, they have the power to stop it. Keep them informed on what geoengineering is for, but don't necessarily ask them permission. And these are the stakeholder partners in the Solar Radi Radiation Government Initiative. Uh, uh, Greenpeace, Greenpeace, good old Greenpeace, there to save the planet. Yeah, but they want to they spray, spray us and kill us all. Uh, great people. And the World Wildlife Fund, lovely. New normals. 100% uh, cloud cover in, our, in, in high pressure is not, in a high pressure system is not natural. This is Kilmore Key County, Wexford. And 100% um, cloud cover, look there, and the high pressure, the high pressure when it's red and it's up around 1,025 millibars, it's, it's, it's high pressure, it should be clear blue skies. If you're over 30 years of age, you'll always remember the weather forecast was saying, and we've got high pressure coming in for the next week, and you go, yay! Because you'll always know it's sun, it'll be out of deck chairs. Can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. So chances are it's going to be 100% cloud cover, because we don't see the sun anymore. The cycles are blocking it out. Uh, blatant artificial cloud cover. Here we go, wave clouds. It's fancy new names on these. NASA have made a cloud chart now to normalize all these new anomalies. And I've got to show you a cloud chart in a minute. Wave clouds. Sundog. See these all the time. Uh, Cirrus stratus fibratus, either, they, they call it different things. They confuse us all, just bewilder us all, these fancy scientific terms. M4 autocumulus or lenticular, all these photos I took myself again. Autocumulus undulatus. Roll clouds, oh, roll clouds, look at this. Go, 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 go. My God. See, unbelievable. Yeah. Straight from a science fiction film. People are actually walking around, just going about their lives, <laughs> not freaking out, like, what the fucking hell is going on up there? Like, 
Jesus. So here's NASA, the cloud chart, um, that are normalizing uh, all these crazy cloud anomalies. When I went to school, there was only nine cloud types. But now there's, there's 36, 36 or 34 cloud types in this with different subcategories and all that crazy kind of stuff. Yeah, you can look at the World Meteorological Organization's old cloud chart and there's something like 200 cloud types, different subcategories, but they're not these subcategories. You can go and look at them and none of these are in it. There's old other types, but they have actually manipulated that old atlas as well. And we don't even know for sure whether them to other cloud types even existed. So they're just playing so much with the science and all the data. Here's a selection of post postage stamps in America. Again, just normalizing uh, all these crazy cloud types. So, what could be causing all these strange anomalies? Surely couldn't aerosols from aircraft couldn't be the only cause, could it? No. Uh, they got all sorts of different equipment. This is an um, ionospheric heater. It's an ionospheric heater known as HARP. It's in Alaska. And there's many of these facilities around the planet, and they all operate under the guise of atmospheric research. Say they're monitoring the atmosphere. So, but what these things are basically, in a nutshell, is they're like a giant microwave oven and they can heat the atmosphere, portions of the atmosphere. And by heating the atmosphere, this is, that's, that's, that's the same facility from a higher elevation. Uh, by heating the ionosphere, so there you go, HARP is, boom, sending up its microwaves up into the ionosphere, which is the furthest, uh, furthest out uh, portion of the atmosphere. And they can heat the ionosphere with these things, and when, when they heat the ionosphere, it raises it up like hot air balloon, and it causes a big bulge, and that causes an air vacuum, and you've got a big suction um, uh, effect taking place. And so basically, by doing this, they can change jet streams and all sorts of different stuff. And uh, there we go, that's where HARP is situated. And um, this is from the MIMIC Microwave Imagery website. And, and you can see this any day for yourself. You can see the pulse is coming from HARP. There's a pulse there. This picks up microwave imagery, it picks up heat. It's heat sensing technology, satellite technology. <laughs> and this is an atmospheric research facility. Again, a HARP. This is the HARP station in Wales. Aberystwyth in Wales. Myself and Harry Rhodes again. Harry, my partner in crime, and a few other. Uh, Activists, we went down there in 2014 to pay a little visit and we just got harassed by the cops for the whole weekend. The whole bill were coming along just harassing us. All we were doing was peacefully assembly, mind our own business, but why geez, they would not leave us alone. And uh, atmospheric research, uh, atmospheric radar facilities run by Aberystwyth University. This is a, a Arecibo in Puerto Rico, it's a telescope, but also it uh, transmits radio frequencies. And I've got a video up on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, all my videos are on my website, by the way. Uh, my links to them are my website is climatechangeagenda.com. And everything, all my stuff is up there. And um, this is uh, basically uh, an ionospheric an heater as well. I've got a video of this thing creating cloud cover just going from America to the Caribbean and been drift, drifting all the way over Ireland, just completely manufactured cloud cover, just like billowing out. It's like smoke coming from a chimney stack, just billowing out, just coming from just this, this facility. I went to Google Earth and I found this and, you know, crazy. And this is a mobile harp facility, they call it the SBX. And interestingly, well not interestingly, shockingly, like uh, this thing uh, has been sighted um, off the coast of all um, the co all countries that have recently been devastated by massive earthquakes, this thing these can not only manipulate the ionosphere, but they can also bounce radio waves from from the ionosphere back down to the tectonic plates, and they can vibrate the plates of the planet, and they can cause earthquakes. They can trigger earthquakes. Nikola Tesla knew this back in the thirties. He reckoned Nikola Tesla reckoned he could actually split the world in two using this kind of technology. He didn't want to use it for bad, for, for, for sinister purposes. He wanted to give the planet free technology and he was a great guy and they killed him and all that. Uh, but you know, so all this technology could be used for great things. I'm not saying manipulate the atmosphere or anything like that, but you know, you could, you could steer away hurricanes and all that, that's kind of stuff. The US military were doing that in the 1960s, no problem, they could steer hurricanes away. Eyes in outer space, look at that documentary, Walt Disney documentary, and it's a prediction of the technology that's to come. Eyes in outer space, amazing, blow your mind, 1960s, oh, amazing. And everything that's going on now was forecast in that. Um, so weather weapons of mass destruction. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, DCU, the Dublin City University, um, that are mentioned in this, in this uh, article. Scientists propose using lasers to fight global warming from space. At the world's first major geoengineering conference, two separate scientists put forward proposals to use lasers to modify the Earth's climate and fight global warming. One suggested that a satellite equipped with a high-powered laser could grow clouds in the atmosphere below, and other port and the other uh, and the other proposed lasers that would uh, blast greenhouse gases from orbit. So they're talking about that they could use lasers to make clouds grow. Uh, later in that article, uh, alternatively, 
We could use another type of laser toting satellite to blast away the greenhouse gases already in the atmosphere. That's what Aidan Cowley, a professor at Dublin City University, proposes anyhow. Okay, so Dublin City, later in this article, actually I haven't got a highlight here, but later in the article, you can look into it yourself, it's all on my website, he talks about our satellites that we have developed. This is already technology that has just been developed, but they're not using it, you see. They're not using it. They're going for full spectrum dominance over this planet now, they want to wipe us all out, but they're not using all these technologies that can do for exactly that. The floods in Ireland and the UK in 2015, uh, December 2015, the country was just devastated. It's kind of hard to remember back because we've just been hit with so many floods, so many weather events, so many traumatic just world events, everything, just like boom, 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 and you just, it's, it's hard to keep it all in. Jesus, man, you know, it's like hard to retain all this stuff. It's unbelievable. This is um, uh, somewhere, um, uh, Carlo or somewhere like that. But around the time of the flooding, just before the floods, this is uh, December 4th, Lots of cloud seeding going on over Ireland and UK, just a big haze of country clouds there was all spread out, there was no national cloud cover at all. And over on, on Weather Online, another website, I, I picked up all this stuff, Harry Rhodes uh, sussed all this out, and basically what, what we see here is we, we see um, projections coming out, heavy spots of rain coming out from um, centralised locations here, one in, uh, up near Belfast and the other in Limerick, so I'm going to show you what they are there. They are these things, they're called next drive towers, and they are, they are Basically, they, they monitor where the rain is coming from. These are things that give us the weather forecast. Like you see everyone queues that getting up there, and you see, actually see these beams coming out, and they're starting to show us this stuff. But uh, what they don't tell us is that, that this technology can also be used to make rain, like rain on request, the, the promo video I showed you at the beginning of the, the presentation. So here's the next rads. The U going by the UK Met office, here they are. One in Shannon, one in Dublin, and one in Castor Bay. That's exactly where all of those were coming from, remember, see? Look, now the one in Dublin wasn't turned on, but on any given day you can see the Dublin one, they're usually all firing off. When it's raining heavy, you look there, and the highest concentration of rain is always around where they are. Whoa, amazingly. <laughs> Conclusive evidence. Again, uh, that's using that kind of technology, uh, ionization and um, uh, electromagnetic technology. This is from around the same time leading up to the floods. This is again from the microwave imagery website, and there's a big, huge pulse. See here, going the whole um, length of the planet, <laughs> from north to south, a big pulse coming from somewhere. Do you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. There's a big pulse. It's a big uh, interference, a wave of interference coming from somewhere. It seems to be coming from down around here. Now down here in the Falklands is this thing, <coughs> Super Diamond. It's another atmospheric wind pro profiler or an atmospheric research facility. And this is run by, guess who? The, uh, the University of Lancaster. Remember University of Lancaster normalizing all the air, the bad air, and you're going to die and all that, but it's your fault. Like all the universities are up to the rise in this genocide, man. Unbelievable. But doesn't that woman know she's lying? That's what I was talking about, compartmentalization. She probably does, I don't know. She looks like a psychopath to me, deranged. <laughs> I don't know, I can't say, I don't know, I don't know. That's what I'm talking about, compartmentalization. That's a whole other presentation, the psychopathy behind all this. Don't they really? Now, others are engaging in an eco type of terrorism, whereby they can all, sorry, this is by the U, former US Secretary of Defense. Others are engaging in an eco type of terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely, through use of electromagnetic waves. That was William Cohen, former US Secretary of Defense, said that. Normalizing the new normals. BBC weather, normalizing it. Uh, uh, Norwegian weather, normalizing chemtrails. Here's Wimbledon. Chemtrails everywhere. I'm not going to show you any more of that. It just goes on and on and on. You can see chemtrails in the sky everywhere that are under, under a pressure timer. Five minutes, lads, yeah? No, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, oh, brilliant. All those things. Massive reduction in sunlight reaching the Earth. Uh, as I said, NASA announced that there's only 90%. There, 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 there is 90% cloud cover over oceans and 70% cloud cover over land. Very little sun left to block out. Now, they're normalizing the, 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 this basically lack of sunlight. They're calling it, and they have been calling it for decades, global dimming. This is what the global dimming is all about. But they have a fancy name on it and they just tell us all our fault again. It's climate change, you see. So, oh, your carbon footprint is causing the earth to heat up and you're creating cloud cover and you're so evil and you're, we're overpopulated. We need to get rid of it. Global dimming. Scientists have now discovered that the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth is diminishing, and this holds the potential for powerful disruption to life on Earth. We are now living in the sixth mass extinction. The sixth mass extinction. Over 200 species of plants, mammals, animals, birds, and insects go extinct every every 24 hours. Imagine that. I wasn't mistaken in saying that. I'll say it again. Over 200 species of plants, mammals, animals, birds, and insects go extinct every 24 hours.
That's tells me it's faster than the natural background extinction rate. And 70% of those extinctions are fungal related. What does fungus thrive in? Damp, dark conditions. Fungal epidemic to destroy mankind slowly. Earth has lost half its wildlife in almost 40 years, says the World Wildlife Fund. What the hell is going on? Nobody's talking about this stuff. Unbelievable. Half, hang, let's read this headline again. Earth has lost half of its wildlife in the past 40 years. Right, this is a, a, a document from NASA, and it's called the NASA War Document. The future is now. And in this, just read this, it's on my website, climatechangeagenda.com, climatechangeagenda and it'll just, it's, it's just terrifying. And I'm not here to terrify you, we need to know the truth before uh, we understand uh, what's going on and the truth will set us free. If we don't acknowledge that a problem exists, we can never fix it. It's like if you're in a bad relationship, you've lived with an abusive husband all your life, and if you do not acknowledge what the problem is, the problem will never go away. So you have to eliminate the problem from the source. We need to know, and that's, that's all, that's, 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 that source is the truth. We need to get to the truth and find out what's going on. In that document, here's one little point, uh, one little aspect of it. Micro dust weaponry, a, mechanic, a mechanical analogue to bio micron size mechanised dust, which is distributed as an aerosol and inhaled into the lungs. Dust mechanically bores into the lung tissue and executes various pathological missions. A wholly new class of weaponry, which is legal. They've legalized all this stuff, by the way. Legalized it all. People think, legal, oh, legalized it all, it must be for the greater good of humanity. No, 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 obviously it's the last judge. Oh, sorry, I forget your, I don't even know your, I never even heard of this man before I came up here today. I was blown away by a lovely, lovely man, so feckin' enlightened. I was in tears down there listening to you, man. It was just unbelievable. But uh, a wholly new class, you, you talked about the difference in legal and lawful. Do you know? There's just no like legal is 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 is, is, is just it's just something that's made up. It, 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 everything Hitler done was legal. It was all on paper. It was all legal. We got to stop going along with what's legal and what's lawful. Like lawful is obviously there's only one law: do no harm. And that's it. So now the scientists will never speak again. So that was the NASA war document, okay? But NASA scientists are now speaking out. Okay? And 74 NASA scientists mysteriously dead in the last 10 years. I'd say it's the largest cover-up in human history continues. I think that's a bit exaggerated, but huge cover-up. 74 of them dead. Mysterious circumstances. Just check it out for yourself. All these, like, uh, commit suicide, blowing themselves in the chest and dying in car crashes and all. All the just typical um, um, New World Order techniques to kill people, basically. Um, per per perfectly healthy, happy guys apparently committing suicide. Um, not saying that Guys that have a happy exterior don't commit suicide, but I'm just saying, this is so suspicious. Uh, look into yourself in here. But why would they spray themselves? This is what people ask. And Max Bliss was at a climate engineering conference in um, um, San Diego um, in 2015. And when he was there, he, was he got talking to a scientist who had then, and, and for the prior, previous two years to that, been working on design, designer proteins, making designer proteins that will go into the human brain and mop up aluminium. So we know that this technology is being developed, and we know it's, it's got to be already in existence because these the elitists, or whatever you want to call the scum, they, they're immune to all this stuff, man. They don't get Alzheimer's, they don't get all the slave diseases that we get. So they're, they're, they're working on it, and it's public they're working on it, but you better believe it that it already exists and they've got their hands on it, and yeah, it's just crazy. So we have never known natural weather. We know this, we can verify this. You can say that to somebody in a pub and if they laugh at you, you take up this document. It's called geoengineering, a half century of earth, exper earth system experimentation. Half a century, 50 years of messing around with the planet. Down here, I'm just gonna to go to the bigger problems to highlight the bigger ones. Argentina, uh, um, an area of 5,000 square kilometers, um, uh, precipitation enhancement, and it ran from 1978 to 2004. Imagine, just one program, you think about the butterfly effect, would knock the whole, you know, the Earth's natural ba uh, balance, uh, the system off balance. Delicate, self-regulating systems in Mother Earth just knocked off balance by one, one program. Think of it, the butterfly effect. Um, but these, this is just hundreds and thousands of programs going on. But climate change again is all your fault, you see. This is how it works. Um, so here's another one in Canada. Um, precipitation enhancement, uh, no, ocean fertilization actually, 1999 to 2002. Uh, another one, no, sorry, 
50,000 square miles from 1954 to 2003 for making it rain again. And here's one in the European Union, uh, 1952 to 2003, 60,000 square kilometres in France. And here's one in China, 700,000 square kilometres, uh, ran from 1958 to 2007. Um, precipitation enhancement again. So these companies conducting uh, thousands of programmes, uh, climate engineering programmes around the world every day realise, but climate change is all your fault, as I've said before. You control the climate. Turn, off, turn down, switch off, recycle, walk, change, just die. Roll over and die. That's what they want you to do. You're creating all these devastating problems. You're killing yourself. You're killing your children. You can't be trusted. You need to be eliminated. And that's that. That's what the climate change agenda is all about. It's not about saving girls. It's about enslaving girls. I'll talk about that in a minute. All this fear mongering about ice caps melting and all bullshit. The sea level rise and meeting. <laughs> Re readings they take from uh, sea level gauges where cities are sinking, like London is actually sinking very slowly but it is nonetheless sinking, so they will take a reading from uh, a sea level gauge in London and it appears that sea levels are rising. It's just very crafty little, little uh, tricks they're using all the time and CO2 is the demon, the gas of life. CO2 they're telling us is dangerously high and we need to reduce it, we need to capture it. We need to sequester it. Uh, we just need to suck it from the atmosphere. Uh, this is the current level of CO2 levels, 400 parts per million. Now, historically, it's even been higher than 7,000 parts, but historically, I just, for sake of argument, I put here 7,000 parts per million. It's been at, historically. CO2 levels, when they go below 1,000 parts per million, the safety buffer against extinction, species extinction is gone. So we're already below that, we're already in the red. That's why Harry Rhodes made this actually, he put this as red. Now look at this, all life, after 150 parts per million, all life is extinct. Now, these psychopaths, all these green agenda operatives, they want a carbon free future. That's what they want. You've got to lower your carbon footprint. You've got to eliminate carbon dioxide. The only way to get a carbon free future is to eliminate you, a future without you. They want this planet for themselves. <coughs> this is a, um, this is, a green, this is a CO2 generator in a, in a greenhouse. Industrial food growers use CO2 generators for, because, to grow their plants because th they know that the plant is starved of uh, CO2. Here's a, a, a tree uh, growing at 385 parts per million and here's a tree at 80, 835 parts per million. More CO2, much better. Brilliant. It's a, a abundance of, of a CO2 means an abundance of life and everything can prosper on the planet. It's beautiful. CO2 is our friend, not our demon. It's just We need to teach our children this stuff because our poor, beautiful little minds are being poisoned. From the minute they go into these indoctrination camps at four years of age, they're stolen from us and they're just brainwashed. And they, they, they don't send them to school. If I ever have kids, I will not send them to school. Home educate, only way to do it. It's just education. It could be great, but the whole system is just poisoned to design, it, design their minds to just accept the extermination. So this is David Keats. Again, David Keith, psycho engineer, climate engineer component. He owns a company called uh, Climate Engineering, uh, no, Car Carbon Engineering. <laughs> and he is set to make billions out of this carbon dioxide removal, or carbon dioxide sequestration, they call it. So, big, big business. He's got his claws in there all the way. Ma wildlife mass die off offense. Birds falling from the sky. Birds falling from the sky in uh, um, uh, Virginia. Uh, thousands of dead starfish. Uh, wash up on a beach in Devon. Uh, tells us that 50,000 50, dead starfish on an Irish beach. Uh, dead dolphins, dead birds, just falling out of the sky. And meanwhile, all of these electromagnetics are just blasting through the atmosphere. Uh, again, here's another pulse coming from, again, super down. It looks a bit different. Can you see that there? Huge big pulse, microwave pulse. You can pick that up on mimic.com. Um, um, but these poor electromagnetic sensitive creatures are just just helpless to all this stuff going on. They can't see what's going on. They just they can feel it. Of course they can feel it, but they, when they feel it, it's too late. They're already dead. They fell down the sky, falling in the sky, and whatever, just drowned. The poor whales or whatever. The sonar testing is going on and all that. There's all sorts of different stuff going on. But uh, yeah, I, I, it's all our fault, you see, because they're they're, they're now um, relating all these mass die off events to climate change. And who's causing climate change? It's all your fault, you see. So you're killing all these beautiful creatures. Unbelievable. So here is, um, this is from a US military um, laboratory, um, a US research laboratory. It's called the um, Rice-Patterson Air Force Laboratory and it's, it's from their website. Now, 
This piece of information has since been taken down, but in here they talk about plasma and electroenergetic physics. And it reads this, the beginning of the description I'm going to read here. The object of this program is to understand and control the interaction of electromagnetic energy and charged particles to produce useful work in a variety of, arena, of are, arenas, including directed energy weapons, sensors and radar, and electro, electronic warfare. Now later, in that article, on that uh, web, uh, website, it reads here, electromagnetic perturbation. New biology, physics, and applied mathematical insights into cell membrane nanoportation uh, from free plane wave electromagnetic pulses. It is well understood that the application of nanosecond pulse electrical fields into cell cells produce multifarious effects, including nuclear granulation, intercellular calcium bursts, cycloskeletal changes, stimulation of action potentials, blebbing and swelling, and initiation of apocalyptic uh, whatever cell death. Apoptotic, whatever it is, cell death. They're talking about destroying the cells of living organisms. That's you, me, the birds, the whales, all that. This is a US military air force base. The Wrights Patterson. Look it up. <laughs> um, extinction of life, ocean life is speeding up. Meanwhile, we've got all of these technologies blasting out. With the climate change agenda, we're going to talk about the climate change agenda. I'm wrapping up now. It's perfect. Five minutes, you just said, and five minutes is all uh, I need. So, um, this psychopath here. He's got a, a really in, keen interest in climate uh, change. He was at the Climate Summit in 2014. Um, he was at the Paris Climate Event, uh, Climate Summit in 2015. And he's really keen on climate change. I always wondered, why are these world leaders so interested in climate change? You know, I always wondered that. And I almost started making sense then when I started waking up. So he's got a keen interest in climate change. He's also got a keen interest in killing people. So, Obama calls climate change a national security threat. No greater threat to the future than climate change, says Barack Obama, or Barry Sotoro, whatever you want to call him. Psycho. Psycho. Another psycho to replace him. This whole Trump deception, my God, and they're just buying a hook, line, and sinker, as if one man is going to change it all. Unbelievable. Same circus, different bloody clown. He is right. Sorry, to go back to that. No greater threat to the future than climate change. He is right, because as Mikhail Gorbachev said in 1996, the threat of environmental crisis is the international disaster key to unlock the new world order. All we need is the right major crisis and the nations will accept the new world order. David Rockefeller. The first global revolution was a book written by the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome was a think tank organization which was established in the 1960s and their stated goal was to create the climate change global warming hoax. Now, Club of Rome were one of the sponsors of the Berlin uh, Climate Engineering Conference that I attended. And in that book, The First Global Revolution, here's a quote. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention. The real enemy then it's, is humanity itself. You're the enemy, it's all your fault, remember? This is all being placed, all pre-planned 1960s, even well, way before, way before, but it's the only actual account on paper that we have of this is in that book. It's the only one I have in here. Uh, again, the fear mongering, the polar bears, all the poor polar bear. You know, we, they pull on the heartstrings. We all love, to, we, nobody wants to see polar bears drowning. You know, polar bears can swim for hundreds of miles. This is just such bullshit. They can swim for hundreds of miles. They have lasted the test of time. They have been around feckin' millions of years, whatever, they're not dying. They're not dying out, sea levels aren't rising, all this fear mongering. You know, I used to see this years ago and I used to, oh, I, started, I stopped lighting fires in my garden all of it. I was real conscious and I used to actually chastise other people for lighting fires in their garden. You know, and I was telling them to lower the foot, carbon footprint. So I in, unknowingly was actually a facilitating the extermination agenda. This is the whole thing. We're all facilitating ourselves if we're not aware of the big picture. So the climate change, global warming, fraud. 30,000 Ameri 30, 30, 32, American scientists and Ameri uh, American scientists uh, signed a petition to say that global warming is a hoax. Uh, 9,000 of those are PhDs, by the way. So, what do they want? They want a world, they want a world full of problems. 
They do this through Hegelian dialectic, or problem reaction solution. They create the problem, which is climate change. The public react with public outcry. Go, oh, come and save us, government. And then the solution is uh, to engineer the climate. Problem reaction solution. So they create the problem, they create the, problem, the climate change problem, they create all the problems, which is all the illnesses, they slowly kill us off, but they blame all us. And the solution then is to lower carbon footprint and to legalize the spraying. That's what they want to do. That's what the purpose of all these, program, uh, these conferences is, to, le to legalize climate engineering. Problem reaction solution. They get, when they create the problems, they get to do things that they would, have, would not have otherwise been able to do. So it's a world full of problems now. Climate change is the biggest threat we face, according to Barack Obama. So we gotta be enslaved in the name of saving the earth. So, the business model cause massive illness worldwide, and big pharma makes trillions every year. Keep the host population dumbed down and so sick they'll never be able to stand up and take their country back from the banksters who are waging economic war on nations worldwide. Frequencies from harp and cell phone towers alter brainwaves which are making people even more lethargic. Controlling the weather equals controlling agriculture and seed and food production. Controlling food production and you control you control food production, you control people. Controlling you control the atmosphere, you control life. The atmosphere is a support mechanism, a su support system. Without the atmosphere, we we, we can't exist. That's simple, very fundamental stuff. But <laughs> carbon taxes is a multi-trillion dollar industry. Carbon taxes on everything. We're already being just conned. Billions of people in the third world are dying because of all these carbon taxes. Millions extra are dying because the food is costing more to get to them. So because with carbon taxes on, so less food is getting to them. So carbon taxes are killing millions of people. Uh, sorry, sorry. Paris Agreement. Following the Paris Agreement, enshrined in the Paris Agreement in 2015, um, this was passed. And in the agreement, this is Save the Earth, the Paris Agreement. There was 500 <coughs> climate laws. These laws you can view on my website, climatechangeagenda.com. Um, these laws are, are just green laws designed on controlling, uh, designed to control every facet of your life. Control over society. This psychopath promises, he promised, he vowed um, in 2015 to pass new laws on climate change, RT News. Um, control every facet of human activity in the name of saving the earth, when in fact it's to enslave the earth. I've said that already. Green communism. It's, the, it's, it's, it's a new type of communism. Environmentalism is, or green environmentalism, or green communism, whatever you want to call it. It's just communism wrapped up in a different, in a different suit. Legalizing climate engineering as the solution to catastrophic climate change will mean legalizing the engineered extermination of life on earth. That's what this is ultimately going towards. Once they legalize it, which they've already done, and they haven't announced that because they don't tell us these things. We know that they've already legalized it because Bloomberg came out at the end of 2016, late December 2016, it's close to Christmas. They always come out with these big, big, big news stories around Christmas and all that, and everybody's completely distracted. <coughs> As if not, they're already distracted enough. Now, geoengineering to alter climate moves closer to reality. Within the Paris Agreement, there's an implicit assumption um, that there will need to be greenhouse gases removed, said Phil Williamson, a scientist at the UK's U University of East Anglia, who worked on the report. Climate geoengineering is what countries have agreed to, although they haven't realised that they've agreed to it yet. So, this is the world we're in. Chemtrails, drones. Drones can be good, I've had one myself, great, you know, they can be used to make lovely videos and all that, I lost it, but uh, anyway, I'm just saying, full of ta a world full of taxes, getting bred up for not having, you know, car, a tax on your car or whatever, you know, uh, different things, I don't condone having tax on car, we shouldn't pay any of that stuff, we're just, again, funding our own extermination, but I do pay it myself, I have to say, because I was off the road for feckin' three years because of different things and all related to that, and I'm just going along with the slave system because I was the only one in my locality doing it, and I was just, I was just targeted, and it just wasn't working, but, this is the whole thing. They can not They can pick us off one by one, but we have a mass movement. They have no hope. Like this, sorry, what's your name again? Tom. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like you say, Tom, we all stand up together, man. You know, there's no hope against us. So this is the world we're in. This is the world we can have. Lovely, clear blue skies. Everybody's happy. You know, um, natural, natural vitamins and herbs and an organic shop. And everybody's happy. And, you know, I'm not saying we can have a perfect world, but it could be so much more better than what it is. So real solutions, the global agenda uh, operates on a mass, mass deception, so informing people is key because once the veil of deception lifts, the house of cards will fall. Okay, so back to solutions. This is what I do. My chemtrail caravan, this is in New Ross, next town down the road there. And 
um, I just go around with banners and good information and I just warn people what's going on and I inform them as good as I can and just give them easy bite-sized information or whatever and I make videos and I just get out there and do it. I'm just a regular guy just doing whatever I can and all of us can do something, you know, all of us can do something. I'm, just a, I'm a toiler by trade, you know, I've never done anything like this in my life. Like, it, you know, I, I'm good at my hands and all that, like, but I've never done anything like this. I always hated school. I was never... I never read or anything like that, but when I found out about this, I just realised I really have to start working my brain here. Even though it's such a struggle, I struggle every day with all this attacks going on. Like, memory is bad and different stuff, And but uh, anyhow, so this is what I do. We can all do stuff like this. Uh, very simple, you know, um, if anybody wants to set themselves up, by the way, I can get free banners printed for you. You can set up your own chemtrail caravan. My dream is to have a chemtrail caravan in every town, village and city in the country. You know, it wouldn't be long. <laughs> System down, you know. If we just uh, could just all of us just take action, you know. Nobody, none of us can do everything, but all of us can do something. All of us can do something. This is uh, uh, me and my uh, group in Wexford People newspaper uh, a few years ago. An eye on the sky, new Wexford group focused on geoengineering. I phoned up the editor of the paper, told him what I was doing, having an awareness day, and I uh, said, Would you come along and take a snapshot and put us in the paper? We say, Yeah, no problem, brilliant. I've got a few articles in the paper actually. You can phone radio, talk. Uh, that's what you can do. This is again solutions. Talk to them when you meet every day. Talk about a dinner table. Just never show up at it. Make, make flyers and distribute wherever you go. Fill in the skies. Put it up online. Um, I've been a bit quiet online myself lately. I've just been busy with other things, designing the website and all that. It's hard to keep going at it all the time. But if all of us are constantly doing something, this is the whole thing. Um, attend conferences like I do. Ch um, go to climate change conferences, climate engineering conferences, uh, Asthma Society conferences. I went to one in Scarty while ago. We're all psychopathic lawyers, all the whole group that were uh, conducting the whole debate. Absolute psychos. Um, I spoke out at it and just spoke nicely, but they shut me up. It was Delphi Technique. The outcome of the debate is already determined. They do not want conspiracy theorists coming along with facts. So, uh, phone and write to agencies like I've done, all the calls are online again, they're all up on climatechangeagenda.com. Uh, uh, clean out the system, spirulina, trituration, spirulina, uh, chlorella, garlic, turmeric. I'm not a health uh, expert or anything like that, but I'm just giving you uh, some ideas. Uh, you all know more than me about this, I'm sure. But yeah. Stop drinking fluoridated water, uh, remove all mercury fillings as soon as possible. By the way, um, even the, the reverse osmosis filtration systems, they get the fluoride out, but there's parasites in the water which are causing brain tumors now. Brain tumors are off the charts. I spoke to a homeopathic friend of mine in Kerry the other day. My dad has a tumor. I want to visit him in the hospital now. We only found out a few days ago. He's up in Waterford there now. I want to spend a day with him. Um, don't know what he's going to, we don't know what's going to happen with him, but uh, um, I spoke to my homeopathic friend in Kerry and she said straight away, Terry, first of all, you have to understand, they're not brain tumors. They're not cancer. They're parasitic cysts. And these things, she says, I've been treating my patients with these, especially since 2011, there's been a huge spike. She says they're parasites from the water. <laughs> that are causing these brain cysts and she said through getting off the fluoridated water and by drinking non-parasitic water you can actually dissolve these reduce them and dissolve them and also went on a healthy non a healthy non-gmo organic diet and um, so Frankincense. Frankincense. Beautiful. Really? Beautiful. Yeah. Loads of different other things to go on all day about all this stuff but uh, she said she said operations, don't go for operation or whatever, but I can't convince my family to do it. You know, with everybody so brainwashed that you need an operation, and I can't do that. And I can't say, don't go for an operation, just go through the, 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 the holistic approach. But anyhow, you know, but anyhow, so, um, these brain tumors have been largely been caused by the water. So basically the solution to the water is, Susie, my friend, told me that in Dunn stores, they do their own Celtic Spring or something like that, and it says it comes from some spring in Kerry. Now, this is the only water in the country that doesn't have this parasites in the water. Check it out yourself, get it tested and all yourself. But the European Union are currently suing the state of Ireland. It's bread and circus again, like as if the European Union care about Ireland's poison, but it's always bread and circus to make us think that the European Union, our big daddy, is there to keep care of us, take care of us. They're suing Ireland now for uh, for such a high, because of such a high concentration of parasites in the water. Parasites in the water. Five, Ireland is five times the level of these parasites that, than any other European country. So, um, so, oh yeah, and uh, stop drinking fluoridated water. Remove all mercury fillings. Very, very important. When the mercury mixes with the aluminium, it goes off the charts. I got to finish up now. So this is a. Uh, this is the world of Armisen, this is the world we're in, everybody's going around like bloody deer in the headlights, don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, all that it takes for evil to triumph, for good men and women to do nothing. Sir Edmund Burke, great Irish man. <laughs> That's all it 
Hang on we humans are the only species that can stop this. No, no, no other species can stop it. It's up to us, and there's only few of us that have enough brain power to, think and, so, uh, to, to understand this stuff. We need to get motivated. Please get motivated. Please get to the streets. If you need help, I'll give you information. I'll set you up with banners. I'll help you in any way I can. Just get motivated. I'll encourage others. There's three other street teams in Ireland being set up now as a result of my actions, so I feel really good about that. And I just want this to explode and spread like a cancer, like a good cancer. Now, not that it's such a thing, but you know, I just want it to spread its tentacles to country nationwide. The destiny of life is in our hands. And that's the end of the presentation.